Hi, I'm Scott Hervey from Weintraub Tobin. And I'm Josh Escovito from Weintraub Tobin. In less than a month, the battle for the Guardian's trademark in Cleveland has concluded, and it seems that Cleveland will now have two teams known as the Guardians. We'll talk about that on this installment of The Briefing by the IP Law Blog. So Josh, I understand we have yet another development in the dispute between the MLB's Cleveland baseball team and the professional roller derby team, the Cleveland Guardians, over the baseball team's intent to rebrand as the Guardians. And what a development it is, Scott. Less than 30 days after the Cleveland Roller Derby filed a federal trademark infringement action against the Cleveland baseball team concerning the baseball team's intent to rebrand as the Guardians following its abandonment of the Indians moniker, the matter has resolved. Well, that didn't take long. What do we know about the terms? Well, as you could expect, Scott, not much. But what we do know is that the complaint's contention that there could only be one Guardians team in Cleveland simply isn't true. In a joint statement released by both teams, they indicated that an amicable resolution had been reached and that both teams, the baseball team and the roller derby team, would use the Guardians team name. Frankly, despite the concerns expressed in the complaint, I think this is just fine. This isn't the first time something like this has occurred. Before the now Arizona Cardinals moved to Phoenix and became the Phoenix Cardinals, they were the St. Louis Cardinals, just like the MLB team. And those two coexisted in St. Louis for decades. That's not a huge surprise. Generally, when these high profile disputes resolve, us outsiders are left without many of the material terms of the deal. Although we're obviously told who can continue or who has to stop the use of a trademark, but we generally aren't privy to many other details, such as how much the MLB team had to pay the roller derby team to use the mark going forward. I would even venture to say that it was more than they would have paid if they would have resolved the matter pre-litigation though. Wouldn't you agree with that, Josh? I absolutely agree with that, Scott. I think it's without a doubt. I think the baseball team probably thought that it could to put it bluntly, bulldoze the roller derby team. And when the roller derby team filed suit, the MLB team realized that it was in for a fight. At that point, I assume the roller derby team knew that it had the major league baseball team's attention and that it had the major league team in a bit of a tough position, having already announced its intent to rebrand and presumably spent quite a bit of money on the, the change. Uh, and so the Major League Baseball team needed to get the matter resolved. And with that in mind, I'm sure the roller derby team extracted a premium that it could that could have been avoided if the Major League Baseball team had offered more than the 15 minutes worth of the team's revenue, uh, as the complaint put it. I, I mean, we are only speculating um, here, but I think this goes to a usually true maximum of lawyering, which is never count out the small guy. It's usually that, you know, small guy who doesn't have the resources in a piece of multi-party litigation that ends up being the most problematic. Wouldn't you agree, Josh? I think that's absolutely right. I mean, I, I think you end up uh, subscribing and making certain presumptions and, and you can get yourself in trouble when you underestimate the small guy in that manner. Yeah. So, Never under underestimate the small guy. But at least now these two teams can move on from here and get back to business. As you know, this dispute was one of many issues that the baseball team faced throughout its process of changing its mascot. Of course, and now the teams, like you said, they can get back to doing what they do, uh, playing their respective sports and selling and licensing merchandise. In fact, I read on Twitter earlier, which you know, more and more becomes a, a my primary source for news, uh, it, they indicated that a local retailer in Cleveland had mentioned that they would be receiving Cleveland Guardians baseball apparel by the 23rd of November. Wow. Well, sounds like a relatively happy ending for everyone and lots of merch to go around. Thanks for sharing, Josh. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for tuning in to this installment of The Briefing by the IP Law Blog. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and our podcast. And if you're interested in more content, please visit us at the iplawblog.com. <laughs>